Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to my Mother 1 GBA Any% percent tutorial. So, um, a little bit, a couple of things about this, this route. Um, Mother 1 GBA is very, very similar to the original Mother 1 on NES and Famicom, but also very, very different. And, um... You can clearly see that in any percent comparing the two any percent speedruns. They're like completely different routes. They're similar in nature in the name of the glitch that is used is similar. However, the details and the like specifics of the glitch are completely different. And uh, there's not a lot of resources for the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, so I wanted to make like a comprehensive video on any percent and try to explain everything that I've learned the last three years of learning this run because it's honestly so much fun and uh, I cannot get enough of it. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to be going over the, like, the current world record, the, like, the current fastest manipulations. There is no Starman Jr. manipulation yet as of the time I'm recording this, but, um... I'm pretty sure it's in the works, so some of this might be ready to, like, might change in the future. Obviously, stuff will change in the future. Who knows what the future holds? But uh, a lot of this is getting pretty optimal, so I think it's a good time to finally make a tutorial. Um, so, specific to this run, GBA any percent, there is not a lot of, like movement tech per se there's one there's one movement technique that's used like throughout the run and there's one glitch used about 32 minutes into the run and um and the combination of those two the the movement tech i'm talking about is called quick dooring and i'll explain it in a little bit quick fade and then um the glitch is called the breadcrumb glitch so those two things in combination with enemy RNG manipulation, as you can see, as you can probably assume on this left side, I've got every single fight that that I will encounter or possibly could encounter throughout the run. And it comes out to be 60 manipped encounters, two bosses, Starman Jr. and Geig, and then seven optional fights, uh, just depending on RNG. Usually like so the way that RNG manipulation works per se in this game is that you're always going to get, like, from a soft reset, you're you're pretty much set to get whatever you're set to get. And what you do in that fight will influence what happens next. So as long as we do the exact specific encounters, um, we'll get the next encounter. As long as the movement is normalized, uh, everything works the same every time. It's incredibly consistent. The issue is if you go off, if you do one action off Manip, it usually ruins everything. Sometimes you can save it comparing like a fight to an auto sometimes, but sometimes it, it uh, spawns a different enemy and usually that's a reset for me. Um, if you're like newer and you're, uh, you can, you can so do, like, like just get through the first 15 minutes by the T-ball bat and then stop reset the game before junior. And you'll be able to like pretty much stay on the route or like like normalize onto what the route is. So uh, I mentioned soft resetting. There's three soft resets throughout this run. Uh, when you soft reset, it resets the RNG back to normal, like back to like zero, a blank. So it's always consistent. So this route has a soft reset during the grind for the T-ball bat, but it also has one before the zoo and one before Duncan's. Um, and yeah, so just when it, whenever my notes say FX, that just means spam fight. If there's something else, then you, like, you cancel the auto or whatever. Uh, and yeah, I probably won't be going over every fight individually, because a lot of fights are very fast, but just know you have to do, like, if I'm fight spamming, I'm not just brainlessly fight spamming. There's a reason for it. And same with, like, missed runs in Magicant. You, like fail to run on purpose, that's that's important for RNG. Or, like, for, like... That's important for the amount of experience you get from the fight and stuff like that. There's just so many factors, basically. But 
as long as you do what you're supposed to do, everything goes normal every time. It's just when you stop, you go off route, that things fall apart fast. Alright, so let's get the run going. I'm gonna try to like highlight what fight we're on. Very important to soft reset before every attempt. That is just part of the rules. Uh, so I mentioned quick fading earlier. Quick fading is when every single time you enter a door or menu transition or anything, um, you let go of R and the movement you're moving. It'll speed up the transition. This is when time would start when you click yes for English. Um, time would normally start when you reset the console, when you hard reset in Japanese, and it would end after the credits for the Japanese version. But for the English version, you just start when you click yes, and you timing ends on the 11th sing after Geig. Um, so the first input check of the run is, I learned this from Uko, you can just actually hold A and B, or just B or just A, you can just hold, hold the buttons. I used to mash for like 30 seconds during this cutscene, trying to get the perfect, like, as soon as it changes to the next scene. But you can just hold a button and it's always, it always does that, so... But this one you do have to mash a little bit, holding doesn't work. And then we're gonna go down, I don't run into the lamp like I did, that was bad. And just go left, bam the, the, the lamp. Important to change your text to 5, text speed to 5. You wanna go all the way to the down right, bottom most menu, change that to 5 really fast. And fight span the lamp. You should smash it on the first turn. And then uh, we quick fade the two doors and we go straight into the doll as fast as possible. We're going to fight span the doll as well. You'll know the manip worked if you just hit it for three. There are a couple other doll fights that we used to do for older manipulations. But uh, this is what we're looking for for this. We just want three HP, six PP from this level two level up. So, we don't need a doll me melody. We can go straight to the phone, talk to your dad, and then go get the basement key from the dog. You have to, this dog, you have to specifically check it by opening the menu and going down to check. If you use L to check, you'll just talk to it. So make sure you check it manually. And then we're going to go straight to the basement. So the basement has two, um... It has two like routes basically. There, you can get early rat or late rat, and you'll know if it's early rat or late rat depending on if you get into a rat fight before picking up the boomerang or not the boomerang, the T ball, the cracked bat. <clears throat> Excuse me, the cracked bat that's right in front of Nintendo. So if you get into a, a rat like one step before the bat, then just hold auto, just press auto, and you'll miss the first turn. But I think you'll smash the third turn, um, and then you have to burn RNG. I have that right here. So th that's like a really finicky part of the run. Um, I'll, I can explain what it looks like for late rat or for early rat, but I'm pretty sure this run got late rat. So I'll show it off for late rat. Yeah, I did get late rat. So I, I got the cracked bat. You want to get all three presents um, as fast as possible, obviously. But so after this rat fight, I'm going to be using an audio cue to know how much to walk around in the basement before leaving. And the audio cue I use is the, the song that plays. So after the battle ends, the basement theme plays and it goes do 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 do. And then once it starts going into this really high pitch do 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 is when I leave immediately. So I'll try to, that was probably a horrible explanation, but hopefully it makes sense. I'll also turn up the audio so you can actually hear it. But so here's late rat. We're gonna fight fight it twice. But so listen for when the high notes come in. So once that like that started playing was my cue to know to leave. Um, for when you get early rat, you have to burn a lot more RNG. And um, Gabulous has a really good video that shows the timing or like using like bouncing off of the top and bottom of the basement walls to track where you are but um 
I was never the best at that, so I just used an audio timing. But it comes really naturally. Once you've done like five attempts, it comes really naturally. Like how much RNG you have to burn. Because if you if you mess it up, then you get this centipede early or something, or you get an extra centipede that you don't want. But yeah, um, upcoming, so that first redneck was chill, this redneck is a fight auto that we smashed turn 2. We're gonna heal after this redneck, which is very important. And then, we're gonna have a hippie, which is great, we're gonna guard auto, but then we're gonna do a delayed sidestep. So that means that, this is another concept that maybe I should explain after this hippie fight. Um, encounter zones. So the only way, like... Doing our actions in battle is one way to influence what's going to happen next, but we only have so much power with that. Um, another way we can kind of manipulate encounters is by sidestepping over where the encounter zone is. So where I am right now, there, this is like Nintendo's house, and this is all not an encounter zone, but the encounter zone starts like about right here. There's like an imaginary line where... Um, once you pat cross this plane, you'll get into fights with any of the, like, first area enemies. So, we're grinding on this plane, and we're going to be sidestepping across to go into the peaceful zone and back into the danger zone to, like, mess with the RNG, basically. So, we used to do instant sidesteps, which was right after the battle ended, I would, like, buffer a sidestep and then go back in. And that was really consistent. But, uh... That doesn't work for this situation because we wouldn't get another hippie. Uh, we're currently on this delayed side step. So what I'm going to be doing after this battle ends, you want, ideally you want to be ending the hippie fight around here, but it doesn't really matter. It's just nicer for a visual lineup. You want to be walking in the encounter zone for about three to four seconds. But what I'm going to do is like run all the way down and all the way up and then side step. And that usually is pretty consistent. But uh, the timing is important to know. To know how much you're walking before you leave and come back. And it's totally fine to mess this up. I've messed this up so many times, like, learning learning this. It's it's not easy at first. But once you get it down, it's really easy. Um, and it's going to be used again later uh, in another area. But the same hippies, basically. Uh, but we have less surface area over there. So it's important to get the timing down. Um, but you'll watch me. I'm gonna go down, and then up, and then sidestep. And that skipped a dog that was there and spawned this third hippie. And we're gonna triple auto. We can just hold auto three times and then cancel it and fight. Um, if you uh, are supposed to hold auto for multiple turns and accidentally cancel it, it's fine. You can just re-auto again and the RNG will be fine. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna go heal at mom and soft reset. So, this is a new part of the run. For the last three years, I've been doing this $500 grind without soft resetting here. But it's it seems like it would be slower, like, logically, but in reality, because it's so manipulated, it's much faster. Um, so, after the soft reset, we're going to do the movement straight to town. We don't have to worry about getting into any of fights, any fights throughout those two encounter zones in between Pippi's mom's house. Uh, make sure you try not to bump into anything, that's the most important thing with movement. Just always be moving, and pop your bread down right in front of the mayor's house. And we're gonna go straight to the graveyard, but first we're gonna, uh, like, do the second half of the grind, so... Keep following this line, basically, it's the same every time. And this fight is the snake, we're gonna fight spam it. So I'll try to point out when I miss quick doors, um, because quick doors are, they add up over time, but it's, it's not the end of the world if you miss them. That was a guard run centipede, he smashes you turn one. Very important, but now we got the redneck, fight spam. But yeah, you don't have to worry about quick fading during um like during this grind when there's there's no no screen transitions anywhere around here. Only a couple minor ones in the graveyard. You you have to worry about quick fading when you're shopping. 
you got a quick stairs, all the stairs, and and when you're breading, I miss a lot of quick breads. So yeah, just to um, explain it, I guess again, quick fading is when you you're you're holding run because the R button runs in the GBA version, and you're moving, and then you go into a door or stairs or use bread or do anything. Once that transition starts, when you let go of all of the inputs, let go of every button on the controller, and then repress whatever input you need, once the screen shows again, it lets you move significantly faster than if you were just holding those buttons the entire transition. I don't know why. I think Tiger knows why, but there's a, a really awesome person in the Mother One speedrunning Discord who uh, discovered this a couple of years ago. Alright, here we're going to be doing this delayed sidestep again, but you see we have way less surface area to work with. So I like went up, down, up, down, up, and then sidestepped. It's really easy to mess that one up because like you like going up and down feels really is, is much shorter. So it feels like it should be fine, but then you sidestep too early. But it's better to be later than actually no, it's just there's a timing. You can be too late and you can be too early. There's just the timing, but it's pretty consistent once you get the timing down. Now I got this crow. We're after that third hippie of after the delayed sidestep number two. We're gonna go down to the graveyard. Um, and like this is one area where this grind saves so much time over all the other grinds. All the other grinds would would still be in front of Nintendo's house right now, farming enemies, but we're like fighting these enemies super fast one at a time, like, right before the graveyard, so we can go straight into the graveyard. Uh, it's also really important, there is an encounter zone right where I am right now. So that last snake, I would like to hook around to the tree to make sure that I don't go into where the graveyard is, because the graveyard spawns start right here, like, right under where I am becomes graveyard. And if you go down, like, one tile from where I am, any of these fights will turn into a zombie, and you'll probably die. So, uh... I mean, I only did that once, and I inst I didn't even try fighting the zombie. I reset so fast, but don't do that, basically. <laughs> so yeah, this is the last crow fight auto, and we're going down to the graveyard. So yeah, the uh, the minip, the five hundred dollar, four hundred dollar grind. It used to be a five hundred dollar grind, so because the T ball back cost five hundred dollars, but the legend who made this current manipulation gadulous realized that we can just farm for $400 and then use the $100 that the mayor gives us for the last $100 for the t-ball bat. Like, so much more intelligent than what we've been doing for the last three years. But, uh, yeah, so now we got these triple bats. The issue is that, like, you have to do the graveyard without the t-ball the bat, which is kind of hard, but with manipulation it's not hard because we can just auto this guy and, it like, we just know what's going to happen. We know we're going to get away from everything. So heal after this guy, it's okay if you forget to heal, you can actually heal after the next ghost too, I learned that in my Japanese PB, but um, it's just safer, it doesn't really matter. Alright, so that's the last like manip fight. Up here, we're probably gonna get a zombie, we're probably gonna get two zombies, I always get two zombies after the ghosts. These guys are optional. Technically, you can get zero. I think one singular time on this route, I got zero zombies. But uh, they're just one turn runs. It's only like four or five seconds. And I always expect to get them. Alright, so here, say no to Pippi. Very important. No, yes. Otherwise, she won't give you the Franklin badge. Um, and then after this little walk, you're going to want to give Pippi the basement key. That's really important for inventory. And also, we're going to use the breadcrumbs, because we do not want to walk around in the graveyard anymore. Give Pippi off to the mayor. We'll be on our way. On our way to the zoo. The zoo is the part of the run. The indicator for if I'll have a run finish, or if my run will crash and burn, is the zoo. And this run had a good zoo. This run had a crazy zoo, actually. It was not ideal. But yeah, we're shopping. After We just got rid of Pippi. We got the, the $500, withdraw 400 Get that T-ball bat. Equip it immediately, because 
I don't like feeling like a doofus when I don't have it equipped. Don't do that and just talk to their talk to this lady, sell your cracked bat and uh buy a bread, one bread. <laughs> Very important zoo bread. And then we're gonna soft reset for the zoo. Uh, and the indicator for soft resetting is once your dad tells you your experience and you press OK, save. You press save after he shows your experience. As soon as he says okay, you can soft reset. Um, and the game always saves. As soon as you click save, the game saves instantly. Probably because it's an 8-bit game on a 32-bit cartridge. But yeah, here we go with the zoo. Um, the first fight of the zoo is a snake. Just try to follow this movement. It's pretty... It's all the same path every time, so once you get it down, it's really consistent. You can do some fun slide-offs on the bridges. But there's a lot of fun, like, sideways walking and, like, Duncan's and, like, Sweet Little Factory. So here's the snake. I like to get the snake, like, like parallel to the bridge. When I get it above the bridge, it kind of makes the zoo crazy. So I like to, like, kind of... Like, do a little backtrack if I know I'm going to be way above the bridge. But uh, we really want these early two hyenas because we're going to grind to level 5 on them. Very important to fight spam these guys. If you don't get these guys, you can back them up with, like, one of the, like, three hyena fights in the zoo. But it's a lot riskier. You really want to be level 5, like, now. Because going through the tigers at level 4 is brutal. So... Um, talk to that monkey and then place your bread down. Don't run into the wall because then you'll get these flies. Um, it's kind of finicky that gate, like once the monkey runs away, but you can, you can easily just hold up. If your positioning is right, you can just hold up and glide through it. Uh, so the, this early fly and triple hyenas is very uncommon. I used to get them a lot when I was learning the game, so you might see them if you're learning, but like, that was the first time I had seen them in a long time. Um, but I didn't get any early hyena fights, which was good. This is where we normally get tigers. I didn't get the early tiger, but I got this tiger. And um, normally they hit you for like 19 or 17 or something. You can just barely live. And this is the hyena zone. I got nothing in the hyena zone. Let me actually pause. It was a little bit behind. Uh, yeah, so this is the hyena zone. Normally you get two fights here. Normally you get one to two fights. Sometimes you can get three fights here. Just like hyena, hyena, hyena. You can't do anything. You just have to run. But this is what the good luck looks like. Even getting one tiger there. Sometimes you can get no tigers, no hyenas. I think I've had a couple of runs like that. The most perfect luck. But um, this is really good luck. Getting nothing in the hyena zone is like so ideal. It saves like 30 seconds probably. So that is really good. So if you did get hyenas in the hyena zone, specifically if you got two or three, if you only got one, I think you would still use your magic herb where I do. But if you got two or three, or definitely if any of the hyenas ran away from you, it'll push the RNG like to the point where you need to use your magic herb like right where an antenna is, like right here is where you want to use your magic herb if you got two to three hyenas in the hyena zone. If you got one or zero like I did, then we're going to use our herb at the end, like right here. And that is important for this elephant fight that we're going to be doing. This is a very important fight for money and experience. We're going to auto for the first three turns. We're going to smash it on the second turn and then double fight. It's also, I was thinking about this earlier. This is one of the longest fights in the run uh, other than like Etoy and... The two bosses, this is like the longest fight. <laughs> it's just a five turn. But he does 29 damage, so make sure you're at full. But doing that herb, that herb is important for RNG and for health. Like, it's important to make sure you get the elephant fight. If you don't herb there, you probably won't get the elephant. And then this girl is actually more important than elephant. You auto twice and then fight. He does 13 damage every time. And he's going to give me 20 or uh, 15 HP there. Plus five Plus 1.5 HP for level 6. Really massive. Uh, especially for Junior. Uh, run from that gorilla. You want to fight from this fight this fly you're going to get. If you run from it, you, it will not work. And it's chaos. 
The run will be fine, but it's it's so annoying. Also important to heal after that fly uh, to get this elephant. If you don't heal, I think you get some crazy stuff before Junior. And you don't want that. So here's Junior. Before Junior, we got one rat we're going to fight. Then we're going to pick up this medicine and the rope. Don't do that. You can also pick up that bread if you really wanted to, but I didn't. So let me talk about Junior a little bit before before we get into it. So Junior is um is like the deciding part of the run. Basically, I, like my strategy for Junior, whoa, is to go in at level six, right? And I normally throw the rope. Like, in the past year, normally I throw the rope turn 2. So normally I fight him turn 1, and I rope turn 2. And then after that, turn 3, I press auto, and I close my eyes and pray that I beat him. If Junior breaks out of the rope, it's not totally unwinnable, but your odds go from, like, a good chance to, like, a very low chance. Your odds go from, like, 75% to, like, 25%. When, like the uh, when the text prints that he broke out of the rope, um, so for a long time I used I used to rope turn one because like we used to like be like level seven and like use defense up or like level eight use defense up and like rope and like spam like healing, but, like, that's like really slow. It's safer, but it's really slow. I I used to just rope turn one, hold auto, and reset if he broke out because I assumed I would die. Or just die and reset, basically. Um, but you can definitely beat him with enough luck if he breaks out early. So it's good not to give up. And this run's a good example of that. Because this run, I roped turn one and he broke out instantly. But somehow I managed to win with a really lucky crit. Um, spoilers, but whatever. But um, yeah. Junior is... So... Like, in my experience, I feel like I have more success at level 6 fighting turn 1, roping turn 2, and then autoing. Um, when that happens, usually Junior hits me turn 1, and I'm at half health, but then the rope goes off turn 2. Like, as, as long as the rope goes off turn 2. If, the, if Junior hits me for plus 30 damage turn 1 and turn 2, then my strategy folds and I die every time. And that's happened to me a lot, but that's like the the risk because if you get past turn two, you're usually home free, uh, throwing rope turn two. But um, that's just my experience. Uh, this run, for whatever reason, I threw rope turn one, and we'll see what happens. So it's important you need one psi after junior, and there's the escape. So I can't use three life ups. I can only life up twice. PK Beam Gamma is the best because it burns all of his PSI. That's probably the reason I won this fight, was because he used PK Beam Gamma turn 2. So that drained all of his PSI except for this one alpha that he had. And that one alpha only did 27, which was like uh, kind of a low roll. It can do like 34 or 36, I think. So um, Junior can still smack me, but now he's out of PP. So it's actually I'm actually in a good position here. Um... But that being said, he still hits me for a lot. And I life up here, anticipating getting outfed and hit, but I outfed, which really sucked. So then I just went for it, and he has no PP. And then I got this smash, which was huge. So, they normally don't look like that. Normally, in my finish runs, Junior's just rope, auto, doesn't break out. And it's just, like, really fast. But um, make sure you get this bread after Junior on the second floor. You can actually get that bread before Junior. But if you do that, it'll it'll uh, bring these encounters, this these snakes and hippies. You'll be getting them, like, right now. Or not right now, like, five seconds ago. You'll be getting them, like, as soon as you start walking north. If you got that second bread before Junior. Because you're burning more RNG in the rat encounter zone before Junior's killed. But after Junior's killed... It's not an encounter zone anymore, so it's not burning RNG. So yeah, these these guys don't matter. You can just do anything. Like I do a random thing on these guys, and it's it's always a one turn. IOP does matter though. This is the like only important fight of North Podunk. You got auto him turn one and then run. 
Um, we used to just auto this guy. If you want experience, you can auto him, but uh, we don't need to with this route. These guys, we used to be able to run from, but I've I, we, we just can't run from them anymore. Just too slow or wrong RNG or something. But it's okay, it's just a two-turn fight. It does suck, though, because they're both nothing. They give no experience. Uh, and then we got a snake and a biopede that we're going to turn one run. And we're off to Magicant. Magicant is um, pretty chill. I like Magicant a lot. Because it's like, oh, we just made it past the, uh, the zoo and junior. So fine. Plus there's like all those buildings and all those crazy people. Um, so a couple of important things to do. We only have three main tasks before we piece out of Magic Ant. The first one is to deposit the Great Grandfather's Diary. We don't need it anymore, and we need that inventory space a lot more. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is heal. Faster to heal at this hospital house than the house to the right. We'll also full heal you, this guy, but um, you have to go through the like heal, jingle, cancel thing. So it's faster to just do the hospital one. Drop your bread in front of these guards because the bread we got from the zoo. So that we don't have to watch this like animation of them moving again. Slightly faster than the other place we could have dropped this bread, which is um, in Thanksgiving. Like after making it out of Magic Ant. So do that movement to get the boomerang. It is the last door every time. And then use your bread as soon as you, after you equip the boomerang. Very important to equip the boomerang. You get a huge attack boost. It, like the largest attack boost. Until you get like Hank's bad. But no one's getting Hank's bad in a speed run. Uh, yeah, auto this guy. If you auto him, he doesn't hit you turn one. If you fight him, he'll hit you turn one. That sucks. Uh, and then go straight down. Right, left, left, right for this. The same every time. You'll usually... If your movement's good, you'll get these two fights on the last floor, but it's totally fine to get them anywhere in the caves. It's just important to keep track of what what right, left, left, right, like, hole you're on, because it's easy to get lost when you're getting these these two fights back to back. But that, that run was important for the level 7 on the bonus whoosh, this auto on the whoosh whoosh, it's chill. This is also important, the, the fight spam, important to fight him twice. You'll get less experience if you don't. I have legitimately no idea why. But he'll greet you politely and leave. This Papa, you're going to auto. If you fight it, then you'll only do like 30-something and you'll not one-shot it. So definitely auto the first one. Heal, and then fight the second one. Like vice versa for what I just said. This guy, if you auto him, you'll, you won't one-shot him. But if you fight him, you will. So it's just like knowing like the ranges, basically. And, um, like, I always have, like, my notes in front of me. It's not like I'm doing this blind, like, or, like, memorized all of these battles. It's totally fine to have this in front of you. I have handwritten notes, actually, because I just, my handwriting's really bad, and I can, like, just know where everything is in my horrible handwriting, because all the letters look unique. So, like, it's just, it's just a lot easier for me. But, um, like, using Google Sheets, it's totally... Totally a good, very solid choice. Um, so yeah, that was the last bonus we fought. Or wait, there's one more after that guy. But this is a family. This is important. I used to die to this fight all the time at level 9 because I wouldn't escape. But with RNG manipulation, we can have enough speed to get away from that family at level 8. Um, and yeah, this is the last bonus. He's going to get us to level 9. Guard twice. I always want to heal on this guy, but I think it is not smart because you got to level up on this fight. And that is Magicant. This is the Forgotten Man. Spam his text four times, and then on the fifth time, say no yes. Be careful not to overmash, because that's probably a bad time loss. Uh, heal, definitely heal. I like to heal after leaving Magicant, but I'm pretty sure Gabulus healed, like... Directly after the last bonus swoosh, I think they healed immediately. Uh, and you need to heal because these guys will do some damage to you. I think 30 exactly, yeah. So heal again. We would need to be above 58 with this heal. So this heal, I was at 61, I think, so we're so fine. But 
Um, depending on how much you move after the Skunk and Lynx, Lynx fight, your life up could vary. And if you are the, at 57 or less, you will definitely die to this upcoming bear fight. So make sure you're above 58. Uh, and so now we're going to sell half of our inventory, the basic sword and the t-ball bat. Money. This is our money now. And we're going to buy three repel rings and one bread. Three repel rings will be used throughout the entire run. Repel rings are incredibly powerful in this version. Uh, and they work based off of your total party's offense compared to the total enemy party's offense that you would be getting into a fight with. So you'll see in a little bit. Um, well, I'll explain that when we get to it. Uh, first off, let's drop a bread in front of Twinkle Elementary so that we can get Lloyd as fast as possible after getting the bottle rocket. And we're going to go down to this uh, skunk fight. This skunk fight, I used to hold auto, and I think it was a three turn, but it was way more text than what this is. Run guard fight. And it's two dead turns, but the two dead turns are super fast, and then the fight just kills it. Nintendo outspeeding. So no damage, really fast three turn. And then this bear, gonna want to auto turn one and then fight turn two and three. He's gonna smack you every time. Except for the last time, obviously. Um, and it feels scary, but it's really not because it's the same every time. Always 57 for like all of my years of running this game. He's always done 57 damage, so that's pretty chill. Uh, heal twice after that bear, or I only healed once. And use a repel ring before. Make sure you've used your repel ring. I used to use the repel ring before the skunk and bear, but you can actually just use it after. The repel ring's important for the rats. Now, do this movement to get this strength capsule. It's very important for Duncan's factory and for Gygus. It's essential for Gygus, basically, the Gygus strategy. And also grab this knife really fast. That knife will be used to sell. And the last thing we need is the bottle rocket. So just do the normal, normal bottle rocket. This factory is really small. Duncan's factory is also like, everyone always says Duncan's is so massive and people always get lost. And it is when you don't know where you're going. But once you learn where you're going, it's, it's a, it's a three minute, it's a three minute factory every time. Like it is actually like, it's so, so fast. But uh, that's with RNG manipulation. It's, it's another story when you're not manipulating as well. Um, so yeah, you gotta check those stairs, otherwise this janitor won't talk to you or something. I don't even know why you have to check those stairs, I just know that it's essential. And then you're gonna say yes, yes, no, yes to the janitor. Um, it's not a big deal if you mess one of those up. I've done that in runs before. I've done that in world records before. Uh, it feels annoying, but it's it's not the end of the world. It's, it's like, kind of fast. Especially on the Japanese version, it's, like, it's so irrelevant. It's such, the text is so fast. Uh, and yeah, this is like the only input break of the run. There's like two minor input breaks when the Jander is walking you and when Lloyd is walking you. Uh, the caveat is that you have to, you still have to button mash the whole time. You have to mash all this text. You got to pick up Lloyd still. But you do have like a nice 15 seconds to like get up and stretch or like crack your back or something or take a sip of water, take a deep breath, crack your fingers. I've done all of those things during these uh, Lloyd walks. It's just you have to know that like Lloyd's going to talk to you there and he's going to talk to you like once you get down the stairs, he's going to say something else to you. Um, we have a little bit more of a break with the janitor, but the janitor says something to you halfway through the second floor too. So there's like minor text boxes, but it's also like you're doing nothing. So, And I love Lloyd's little moonwalk there and yeah, blow up this room. Um, we're gonna drop that bottle rocket immediately. It's so ungodly useless once we have Lloyd in our inventory, like Lloyd in our party. Um, that bottle rocket doesn't sell for anything and it does like five damage. It's actually so pointless. Um, and yeah, now that we got Lloyd, we're gonna sell that knife. We're gonna withdraw 600, like as all the money we have basically, like, so 698. Normally, if you have 700, definitely withdraw 700, but... I've had like 630, 650 at this point. So we're going to buy six breads and one boomerang for Lloyd. The six breads, I'll be, you'll see what all their uses are for. 
the boomerang is for Lloyd. So Lloyd's going to equip that. And even at level 1, it's going to hike his offense like plus 32 or plus 36 or something. And that's really massive for the to like the party offense, total party offense I was talking about earlier with repel rings. So doing this, like, will get us far less fights than if we didn't. If we were no boomerang, no repel ring going into Duncan's right now, we would be getting so many fights. And that's why, like, Duncan's is so hard. It's such a big factory and it's so, like, the enemies are rough. But, um, but, uh, once you, like, like, once you've got the technique down, it's, it's so chill. So, yeah, we're gonna take the left side. Um, we're gonna drop our bread under the rock. I used to smack my face right up against it, but it's really not optimal. This was alright, it could have been a little bit better. Um, and something important here, we're gonna be holding, like, all the way left here and then up along this. This is to skip a bear fight doing my movement like this. I still didn't even do it the best. I hit my face on the tree there. Um, but doing like normal, like what would be optimal movement there is like gets you a bear fight every single time. And Gabulus like knew that and was like, this is the fix. So yeah, don't smack your face on both the trees. That was a really stupid error. Normally I just hold right and then upright and then right before the dog. But I messed it up there. You can also just talk to the dog in front, but you have to show him the pass. You actually don't talk to him. Uh, don't check him. Don't talk to him. I've done that so many times. So drop a bread in, at the start of Duncan's, and then we're going to go down left. We're going to run auto this guy. So sometimes you can get a scrapper that you would also run auto, like a single scrapper. But this is the doctor scrapper. We just run out of them. He did 28 damage. And follow my movement. We're going to be going to the strength capsule in Duncan's factory. So you just go down left until you see that first ladder, skip that first door, and hit the second door. This actually has three capsules in it. All we need is a strength capsule, and then use the breadcrumbs immediately. Back to the start, and we've got this Doctor plus old robot. This is the only run guard of Duncan's. We used to run guard everything in Duncan's, but now it's all run auto. Well, really, there's only like four fights in Duncan's. But yeah, as soon as your repel ring wears off, use another one every time. As long as you have repel rings, use another one. <laughs> or you're not in an encounter zone, but clearly I am, so... So yeah, upcoming we're going to do the capsule manipulation. This is to ensure... So follow my movement. These red... When you see these red dots like that, I like. I know that's when you can go right. But, um... Yeah, Duncan's movement... It feels like it's really intimidating, but it's really chill. Like, if you look... Like, I just like looked at a map and, like braced the path with my like cursor like four or five times like on my computer when I was learning it and then I also like wrote physical notes on how to get through it um but it's the same path every time and it's really chill in this manipulation but so so for the capsule manip though so we're gonna go up this double ladder and this ladder is where we're gonna be grinding so this ladder the first ladder like we're at like kind of the top parts of Duncan and we're just going to be going up and left, and then down and all left for the rest of Duncan's. We've been going all like right and up and over here. So um, on this ladder, we're going to be going up, and we're going to be grinding on the left side of this ladder for this next fight. Uh, and that's important for the capsule manipulation. After this fight, this fight's going to be a run auto. So run with Nintendo and then auto with Lloyd. And then um, after this fight, I'm going to hold right. And then hold left. So I'll like hit my face on the right side ladder, hit my face on the left side, and then use my capsules. And the first capsule should always give me a plus six. And that's really, really important for uh, your the manipulation for getting our HP values to be at a really high number by level 15. That it makes Gygus like basically free. So, whoa, I don't know what is going on. The footage kind of went crazy, but... We'll, we'll back it up a little bit. So we are going up left. We're going to grind on the left side of the ladder. We're going to run out of this guy. These guys. Then hold right, hold left, use capsule. For some reason, Lloyd had my second capsule, but in my Japanese PB, Nintendo had both capsules. So I don't know why the inventory was a little weird, but all that really matters is that you get plus six from that first capsule. Getting plus 11 is 
so, so much, so much better than getting plus, um, plus 10. You wouldn't think so, but it actually makes like a 7 HP difference, and a 7 HP difference on the final boss is ungodly massive. But yeah, just keep doing this, like, ending Duncan's movements that just all left. This last room, you can just literally hold straight left, and you'll be lined up for the rocket still, even if it looks like you're not. So now we're going to the breadcrumb glitch. You'll notice we're 31 minutes in and this run has been basically glitchless other than the quick door here and there. Um, the run has been glitchless, but that's about to change. We're going to go do the only glitch in the GBA version, the breadcrumb glitch. Uh, before that, we have two fights, UFO, Barbot, Run Auto. They should only do like 10 damage. Both of them. Um, and yeah, the breadcrumb glitch, it can be really confusing, but it's also really chill. Once you've got it down, like everything. But it's definitely the, this is like, I don't know, I think you'll be able to tell if, you, if you'd like doing this or not, just by looking at it. And I think most people, at first glance, would not think they would like it. But it's actually so fine. It's actually so consistent. So, this is the breadcrumb glitch spot. It works here, and it works here. And what you do is when you leave a bread here and drop it and then use it, it teleports you to the bread from the void. It teleports you to an identical version of this map with nothing loaded in. So you can just run around everywhere and it's just a bunch of corruption. But then you can use more bread to put you back inbounds, to, like wherever on the map. So this is what we're going to be doing with our bread. We have... Um, we used two breads in Duncan. We used or we used one bread before Duncan's, and then we used one bread uh, during Duncan's. This we're gonna be placing one bread within ten here, using it immediately, and then we're gonna be walking one hundred and seven. Like these, you see these little tufts of grass. They exist in the breadcrumb void, and they're the only thing that exists in the breadcrumb void. And since they're the only thing I could use to keep track of where I was, it's. I count them 107 of these guys to the right. And then we're going to be going six upright, six tufts, tufts of grass upright that cross past Nintendo's head. Um, that's like the lineup. And then, so once you go up six, it's really important not to go up any more or any less because you'll easily soft lock. Um, you're going to drop your bread and then you're going to hold down for 13 tufts of grass. And then once you've hit 13, you're going to hold down right. And from there, you're completely free. And so that's all I mentally prepare myself before doing the breadcrumb glitch. I tell myself 107, 6, 13, um, because those are the three numbers that matter. But let's see it in action. So first, we're going to use that bread. It's good to use Lloyd's bread here because he might as well use his bread while he's still alive. Uh, and yeah, so I'm counting to 107. Every I'm holding right and R, but every time I cross, I'm counting one of these. And I actually messed up this run. I only went 106. I miscounted by one. But that uh, little, you saw a little, like, the, the chunk changed a little bit, like, 15 seconds ago. That was because, that was at number 30. I don't know why that was at all. It was something. It was probably, like, Magic Ant, because I think that's near Magic Ant is on the map but yeah so you just go i like i used to like tap my foot every time every time i'd pass one i'd tap my foot and count to 107 i mean i used to have a lot of different setups um the the old eve breadcrumb walk was actually really easy it was really really simple but um this is more complicated, but it's also way more efficient than what we used to do. So we just went up 107, 106, and we're going to go up 6 right. Let me uh, show that again. So I'm walking. This is still my like Y position. has not changed. I've just stayed on the X axis this whole time. And uh, watch Nintendo's head when I'm going up right. Because that's what I'm using to, to like gauge. I have no idea how far back I skipped, so I don't know. But it'll be coming up soon, I'm sure. There it is. So three, four, five, six. Uh -huh. 
I don't know, I kind of think I did that wrong. Alright, yeah, so it's not his head, it's his feet. Didoy. But, um... Yeah. I mean, I've softlocked on this a couple times, but it's just good to practice doing this, like, five times. So I started going on this grass. I was supposed to do this one, but I started going upright on this tuft of grass. So I'm going up right now, and I'm tracking this one, I believe. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So right here is where I want to be. It's really right here, but it's right here also works. And so I drop Lloyd's bread, and now I'm going to walk down 13. And then once I get to the 13th one, I can hold down right. And from here, I can just keep holding down right, and the like my position, my movement will get locked eventually. And where it'll get locked is absolutely perfect for what we're trying to do. So we're going to drop our bread right here with Nintendo, and then use Lloyd's bread that we dropped earlier. That will put us right here. Right here happens to be the medicine man's house, which is this guy who just gives you straight up medicines for free. We're actually like outside of LA right now, which is the city where you recruit Teddy. So we're like past the swamp, past Youngtown, past LA. We're like coming up on Itoy Caves, but we, we don't need to do any of that. We just need we just need the medicines and we might as well take the sleep too because it's here. You can actually cancel the 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 sleep jingle. But yeah, this is the second bread that Ninten placed. This is where it puts you when our movement got locked. It put us right on this border of Mary's cutscene. So checking Mary here gives us all of the melodies. The game thinks there's no way we could have been there without getting all the melodies. So we have to have all the melodies now. So when we fight Gagets, we will have the melodies for him. But this is the, uh, here we go. This is the E-Toy Minute. So I should mention before, um... Uh, uh, on this first fight, or right here, you can get into two Gigaborgs, and you just run out of them. Basically, everything you do here, if you do it wrong, if you do the wrong input, Nintendo will probably die, so be very specific with what you're doing. And as long as you do this, everything works every time. So, life up turn one on these first triple, triple blast Armin, life up Nintendo and auto with Lloyd. If you fight with Lloyd, Nintend dies turn one. Learn that one the hard way. Um, but yeah, if you life up, it's so fine. Life up auto, and then you guard three turns. So that was one turn of guard. This is turn two. And turn three, and then we're going to fight. Definitely don't auto. Alas. For this fight. For this fight specifically, we are fighting the last turn. And they did 41 damage, but you should have just healed at the healer's house, so it's it's chill every time, basically. Um, and yeah, we picked up, I should mention, we picked up 11 medicines at the medicine man's house. 3 for this a toy grind, and 8 for Gygus, but really, we could I could get away with like 9 or 10, because you don't really need 8 when you have super high HP. Well, really, you don't need 8. You, you can just beat it with 7, even at like like, with good luck. You can beat it with 5 if you have insane HP. But yeah, here's the Star Miner. You're gonna run twice. It's so fine that you don't get away the first turn. He always hits you for 60-something. Just medicine after. Medicine before that guy, medicine after that guy. Basically, all the fights in Ito you medicine after, except for this next fight. And that's because we spam life up the entire fight, basically. But this is the reverse Mount Itoi movement. Very important that you don't get lost here, because it's not very common, but just do what I do in this run, this is fine. Um, normally you're going up, Etoy. Uh, you're taking this path up to Eve, or with Eve, but I should mention here, if you go technically, like right where my cursor is, is fine, but right here, this line... All of this and below is a different encounter zone than above. So if you go any lower, it will ruin the RNG. It'll be a sidestep like I was talking about earlier. 
and um, you'll you'll ruin the you'll you'll just not get the fight. You'll you'll either not get the last starman, you'll get a different fight, or the last starman will kill you. I'm pretty sure you just don't get the last starman, and then you get like a different fight at a different timing, and it just ruins everything. So do not go below this rope until you have bought your second set set of three last starmen. Just grind up and down this rope until the three last starmen appear. Um, very important. The second you go down, the the RNG updates and your run dies. So don't even do it once. But as long as you're chilling, you can life up the first three turns of this fight. And they might do a little bit of damage, but they're going to do a lot more damage to themselves. Miss the shield. Starman A kills himself. Starman C also kills himself. Last life up. And then we auto. That's also important. And yeah, so these Starmen give like ungodly experience for what level we're at right now. It's very massive. And since Lloyd's dead, Nintendo's getting all of it. And yeah, plus 13 is huge. So now that we've killed those Starmen, we can come down to the bottom. We're already at full health. Grind out this Grizzly Bear. This Grizzly Bear is the best fight in the game because you guard him and he does his final desperation attack. And he leaves you at 3 HP. But then you win. Very important. You win. <laughs> uh, and then you just medicine this guy. Use your breadcrumbs, and then you're gonna have to rearrange your inventory to get full medicine. So you have to give Lloyd the ATM card. You can drop the Franklin badge, but I gave it to Lloyd because I don't know. And then give all of Lloyd's medicines to Nintend. It's the the menuing is really chill when Lloyd is dead because when he's dead, the cursor defaults to give. So you just go straight to Lloyd's medicine, and it defaults give, and you just give it straight to Nintend. When Lloyd is alive, it is not like that, and it defaults to use, so don't eat your medicines with an alive Lloyd. That would really suck. But it gives you, like, another prompt on, like, who you want to medicine if you accidentally do that. Alright, let's get into Gygus. Gygus is, um, I like to call him an auto-scroller, because this is all I do every time. PSI shield turn 1, quick up turn 2, depending, if I got outsped turn 1 then I'm probably at a really low HP after the first quick up, and I probably have to medicine turn three. If you have to medicine before your first quick up, you're probably screwed because that means you're still speed tying Gygus, and you might just lose. You might just lose the tie and lose. But once you have one, I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure how Gygus's speed works in this game is that it's identical to Nintendo's, like one-to-one -one with Nintendo. So if you use one quick up, you should always outspeed him. But we like to use two quick ups just for like guaranteed safety of always 1 million percent outspeeding it and not even the chance, like not letting Gygus get the chance. Um, but that's all the setup you need is one PSI shield and two, one to two quick ups. And then um, you just spam guard until you get this sing command. So it's really just like two phases. The first phase is setup and the second phase is singing. And the, second, the singing phase is just sing, sing, medicine, sing, sing, medicine on repeat until the last phase where you just triple sing. But I got outsped here turn one, which is chill because I'm at 129 HP, which is really good. Um, you'll, you'll see why that's really good. Hopefully you'll understand. But I got outsped again, which is just really not ideal. But I did get my quick up off, so now I can medicine and go outspeed that time. Um, so yeah, since I got double, <laughs> double outsped, I'm probably gonna quick up again, but I'm, like, fairly certain this fight is totally doable with only one quick up. Um, and so yeah, after, now that we've got that down, we're just gonna guard until Gygus says, I need, I want you to board the mothership with me. When he says the word mothership is when I know to medicine. Because when I medicine, the turn that he says... Um, like, after he says Mothership, I'll have Sing the turn after that, if that makes sense. 
the eye medicine to turn before Mothership, which is not optimal by any means. But, um, it's still fine. So now I'm just going to guard since I just medicined. And then this turn, like, ideally you should be medicining this turn. And now this turn is the first sing. So you need to do 11 sings. This is the only way to beat this boss. This boss has infinite health. And it's not like level 15 and 10 is doing a lot of damage. Or dead level 1 Lloyd is doing a lot of damage to begin with. So it's honestly better that he has infinite health. Because we can just do this. Um, this was kind of goofy because I got, uh, I sung on the first, I like, did a one sing and then medicine, and now I'm doing two and three. But, um, I just keep tallies. Like, I literally, my notes, I, like I said earlier, I have handwritten notes for all my routes. So I just, like, have a tally in the bottom right, and once I get to two, like, once it gets to ten, then the eleventh thing is when time is. Um, and tallies, like, group in five, like, tally marks. Uh, so this was the craziest part. 46 is Gygus's highest roll. He hit me with a 46 and I had 49 HP. If I did, was not at 129 max, I would have had way less than 49 HP on that la on that cycle, and I would have totally died to that 46. So that, all the, like, the capsule manipulation was to ensure that for the e-toy manipulation, we got, like, a ton of HP. Because sometimes you can end the E-Toy manipulation at like 110 or something, and it's just like you're so screwed against Gygus. But, um... Uh... Doing... Getting the plus 6, plus... Four, like, if you get a plus 4 on one of the capsules, then like you're probably, probably screwed. <laughs> to be honest. But, um... Like, your HP is probably screwed. But Gygus is super chill, and this is the end of the run. You just... You just... Sing, sing, medicine. I'm at 22, medicine. What am I gonna do next turn? Sing. I'm gonna do the turn after that, sing. And then medicine. And it's the same every time. It it used to be a more of a roller coaster. I used to do this fight at level 13. And I would have like 120, 118, or like 121 HP. And that shit was a roller coaster. That was like not it's it's doable. It's so doable. But it is way riskier than doing this. And it also the route itself took longer, which is the craziest part. <laughs> like, crazier that this route is so optimized, it's two levels higher than one of the older routes, but it's still faster. That's just how optimal it is. <laughs> but yeah, um... It's... I, I just love the run so much. It, especially with how fast it's gotten, it's really... It's just a bunch of, like, mini dungeons back-to-back, -back and then a huge glitch. And it's kind of complicated. But once you get it down, it's it's the same every time. It's always the same every time. The only thing, the only variance in this run is Starman Jr. And that's pretty much it. Once, like, at my level now, that's the only spot where I see, it, like, heavy variance. The only other times I see variance in attempts is when I mess up something. Which is what I love about this game so much. Unlike Earthbound Boogie Percent, where you just have the worst spawns and you just can't do anything. Or when your name is Daniel RGT and you had a race yesterday and you died to Ant five times because Ant just kept smashing you or screwing you over turn one. It was actually unreal. I can't, that happened yesterday. I was losing my mind. Daniel pulled out a pretty insane run with uh, the bike and with some glitches. But, uh, man, Earthbound can be really forget unforgiving. This game has been nowhere near as unforgiving to anyone as it has, to, as, as Earthbound has, I think. Um. But, yeah. I just, I, I like how, it's, like, manipulated, but it's also, like, loose manipulation. It's not, like, I, I don't know the word. It's not, like, um how in Earthbound, and it also in Mother 1 Famicom and NES, RNG is like, RNG is influenced by your cursor movements, and influenced by text printing and the menus being open, and none of that is the case for the Game Boy Advance version. You've seen, like, I've, like, flashed the menu a couple times, or, like, like, just, like, make random input errors that would normally kill an Earthbound any percent manipulated run 
and it's just so fine in this game. The things that kill runs in this game is doing the wrong action in battle, and you feel like such a doofus when you do it, but every time you do that, you remember it, and you get better at the game. The only reason that, like, this was the last thing also, um, but yeah, like, the only, the only way, the only way that I've, like, been able to be so successful in this game is because I've legitimately messed up every single fight, every, like, everywhere. Like, like I've messed up all of the Etoy fights at some point or another. Maybe not the Starminer fight. But, like, I don't know. Like, it's... This is a really hard game, casually, in general. And, um... It's, like, don't beat yourself up over resetting over what... Like, you might think it's, like, foolish in the moment, but it's so... This is a hard game, and... I don't know. I don't know how to, like, put it into words, basically, but every reset, you get better at the game, and eventually, it's just, it's, it's just so fun, and you, once you've just messed up everywhere, it's just, like, it's, like, I'm not gonna mess up there. I already messed up there, and then there's, there's no spots like that in the run anymore. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't even know, but, um, yeah. Back to the actual game, um, these are the credits. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, so yeah, this is, this was the current world record, but this manipulation that I just went over, the like, the 500, the $400 grind is not currently implemented into any of the glitchless, the Mother 1 GBA glitchless, world records or runs for that matter in fact the mother one gba glitchless leaderboard every single run on there except for the eighth and ninth the seventh and eighth place run the 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 top one through six runs for the gba glitchless leaderboard were all world records at the time of their recording which is pretty crazy the the literal sixth place run was world record when it was recorded like a decade ago and same with fifth and fourth and third and second. Just create, or like, with less time, obviously, but it's just, I don't know. Glitchless is so mysterious to me. It's so much more RNG because you have to, it's, it's more skill based, it's longer, you have to know how to do teleports. And maybe eventually I'll talk about Glitchless, but I don't think I know as much about Glitchless as I do any person. Um,. And now that I say that, I feel like I should have talked about, like, the breadcrumb glitch more, but, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, this, what I was saying earlier, this $400 grind is not implemented in the glitchless, so if someone wanted to learn the glitchless route and use this $400 grind, it would save two minutes on the current world record. But someone's probably gonna be me soon, because I'm getting pretty bored. But, um, I don't know, maybe I'll make a glitch, something about glitchless soon. But yeah, like, Glitchless is so similar. Like, I learned any percent first, and then I, I taught myself any and routed any percent first, and then I learned Glitchless afterwards. And I was really bad at some of the things that the Glitchless runners were all really good at, but my early game was usually just really, really fast, and I, I, did, I do have a little bit of experience in... Um, routing an RNG, enemy RNG manipulation, so, um, doing, like, glitchless rerouting was, has been a lot of fun, but yeah, I need to, um, update the glitchless route so that this, this early game works with glitchless's end game and, mid, well, really glitchless's mid game, the desert, but yeah, um, I don't know... I don't know how much I missed this run. Uh, I tried to t go over everything to my best ability. I'll go over quick fading again. Quick fading is you let go of all of your inputs. So, like, specifically um, department stores where, where I really want to talk about quick fading. Um, so, like, there is a quick fade. I'm withdrawing money. 
Well, actually, let me go back a tiny bit more. I'll show you all the quick fades. Get the key. Quick fade there. Quick fade here. Quick fade here. ATM card. Quick fade stairs. Quick fade. So every time I go, like, I'm holding left and R. Well, here I'm about to equip the bat. Let go of everything. Let go of everything. It's like, it's a timing. But, um, I want to see, I think... Reset, I missed a quick... No, I think that was in my Japanese run. The current Japanese world record. I don't know. I don't think I missed any quick fades. No, I definitely did. I probably, like... Usually in Duncan's, I miss the quick breads. Because I'm, like, focused on the enemies or something. But yeah, everything is quick fade this door. Oh, we don't even go in the hotel anymore. We used to go in the hotel, and I used to miss the quick fade in the hotel all the time. Um, but yeah, that's that's quick fading. It's it's really only super relevant shopping when you have to go up all these stairs. And I use a GameCube controller, but I'm pretty sure everyone other than Uko and Skateman plays on keyboard, so. I don't really know how quick fading feels on keyboard. I imagine it would be awkward, but I always thought keyboard was just awkward for this game. I didn't mind keyboard for NES and Famicom because that game already has such clunky movement. Like, you might as well just be using a freaking keyboard anyways. This game is so slow. But this game actually runs a lot faster, so... I, I was never as precise with keyboard as I was with GameCube controller. Alright. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's quick fade. And the breadcrumb glitch. It's scary. It, it all looks the same. But there's a lot of methods for counting. Like, I used to, like, visualize. Like, I used to, I used to say, I used to bounce my foot or, like, tap my foot, bounce my knee. I used to visualize, like, numbers. Like, there's, like, a highway sign in front of every single, pix every single like, bush. That's, like... Like, you know, the highway, like, mile, like, mile one, like, mile 57. Like, I would imagine there was one of those in front of every single one and just visualize it. But just, like, the number. Um, I used to count out loud. I used to whisper to myself, like, whisper the number. But counting out loud is, like, I don't know. I, I get pretty brain dead when I'm counting every single, like, you have to count it fast out loud because you're moving fast and, like, yeah, it, once you start rushing the, like, longer numbers, it just gets confusing. So it's good to, like, count in your head. I don't know, whatever works, works. I've been doing this for so long that it's, like, I've, I've not even that long. I've only been doing it for three years, but it's just, it's super natural to me. I don't even, like, think. I used to, like, I used to, like, have to go zen mode and hyper-focus if I wanted to actually, actually do a successful breadcrumb walk mid-run, but nowadays I can just, like, chill. It is important not to, like, look away from the screen. The second you look away from where you're counting, you're going to lose track of what you're at, and you're going to be so lost, because then 10 feels like he's moving slow in the moment, but he's actually moving fast in the moment. Uh, he just, like, I don't know. I feel like he moves slow, because I don't know why. But he, he's actually moving fast when you're running the whole time. But yeah, that's the Breckham glitch. I love it. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments. I love to talk about this game more than I love to talk about anything else in this world, so I'd be happy to answer any question. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want to do like a glitchless, glitchless thing. I don't, I don't know if this is really a tutorial. This is more like a world record analysis. I don't... Like, for tutorial, I feel like you need to be more beginner friendly. Like this is not a beginner tutorial. This is like the this is a GBA manipulation tutorial. I'm just gonna call it any percent commentary route route analysis commentary. I'm just gonna put a bunch of those words in the title and then hopefully it makes sense. But yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm so happy to answer them. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning this game, whoever Whoever, whoever is crazy enough to learn it like I am.
It's so fun. So, so fun.